Hello. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? How are you guys? Where are you coming from? This is Lemon. He doesn't like when I talk to live streams without him present. Do you have anything to say? <laughs> Feel free to pop any questions. I have Instagram Live going too. So if you guys have questions there, I'll answer them. Hi, Brightest Crayon. Hi, Luna. Hi, Rex. Hi, Katie. Oh, remote working from Brazil. Awesome. Um, Jim Wardy asks, why are type fives the least common type? There aren't I mean, there's been some research about which Enneagram types are the most common, um, but I don't think it's, um, I don't put a ton of stock in that because the sample sizes have been like 5,000 people. So um, I also don't think enough people know about the Enneagram to know, like to, to like fully capture how many people um, are each number. So I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Yeah, he's the cutest. Thank you. I love my hair too. I got a summer, summer spring chop. I'm really into it. Hi, Abby. Nice name. Way to go. If you have any questions on the YouTube stream, go ahead and pop them into the chat and I will address them. Um, yes, having a good day today, uh, but our internet is a little spotty. So if I cut in and out, I'm sorry. Bad day for our internet to be spotty, but that is what is happening. Um, hurting all the cats on Instagram says, why does everyone think eights are jerks? Maybe people can't handle our direct approach. I think that eights are um, commonly seen as jerks, quote unquote, because um, they're Bluntness can be seen as like yelling or aggressiveness when really they're they're very much to the point. I think we would all benefit from giving eights more of the benefit of the doubt that, you know, they're just trying to get things done and not necessarily being mean about it. Um, I think a lot of types like type twos and type fours, they need that that sandwich of um, of when you have an issue, you have like the compliment and the affirmation, and then you've got the issue at hand, and then you've got the compliment underneath. So you've got like a little sandwich cushion of feedback, uh, but eights like despise that. They just want the feedback. They just want it to you straight. So in that way, um, that's, a, that's a, a, w a better way to communicate with eights, I find. Hi, Avi, or is it AV? Abby, yes, I do say that to you every time because Abby is such a good name. I'm biased, but yes. Um, Fulanita on Instagram says, I am unclear what my Enneagram type is. I've done several tests with differing results. Any advice on how to hone in on my re results or how to figure it out? I think tests are a really helpful way of kind of starting and, and seeing like, okay, like what types might I be? But uh, I wouldn't put too much stock in online tests. They're, 
they're um, not that accurate. Like it's a good way of narrowing down what types you might be, what types you might not be. But at the end of the day, you are the one who knows what your motivations are. And it's really hard for a bunch of tests on a bunch of questions on a test to um, figure out why you do the things that you do. So I, I really recommend for finding your type to learn a ton more about each Enneagram type and read books about it and um, think deeply about it, journal about your reasons for doing things and looking at the core four, which is the core desire, core fear, core longing, and core weakness of all the nine types and finding your, uh, your most resonant type within that structure. So um, tests are a helpful way of entering into the Enneagram space, but I wouldn't put too much stock into it, into telling you, you are exactly this type. Got some questions rolling in here. Sweat, sorry if I say your name wrong. Eights get really, eights really get lots of bad reputation. They don't deserve, they can be awesome people. Eights are freaking awesome people. I think that sometimes people are afraid of the direct approach and the way that eights, um, that the relationship that eights have with anger. Um, a lot of types run away from anger or try to cover it up because they feel like it's a bad emotion. Eights have anger ready at hand. They, um, they use that anger to get justice for themselves and for other people. So I do think eights are historically, historically get a bad rap on the internet, but um, they really are beautiful people with huge hearts um, and a lot of love to give. Abby says, I still don't know if I'm a six or a one. Can sixes be strong perfectionists? I think that um, any type can be a, a perfectionist. You need to look at the reason behind it. Um, are you trying to be a perfectionist because um, you feel like if everything's not perfect, like the world is going to fall apart and like everything's going to be bad and all these worst case scenarios are going to happen. Um, if you could kind of write why you feel like you are a perfectionist um, in the comments, we can dive deeper into that. Madam Chillman, that's a great name. Do you think that Enneagram types are nine different types of trauma responses? All the other fours I know have had similar early childhood experiences to me. I am not qualified to talk about trauma or trauma responses. Uh, that would be a wonderful conversation for a licensed therapist who has um, experience and, and, and years of, of schooling to talk about trauma. I'm not qualified to talk, talk about trauma, so I'm not even going to try. Um, that is for mental health professionals. They can do a better job at that than I can. Adriana, who I'm assuming is an eight, says we can also be seen as jerks when we call people on stuff and give them incentive to learn, but they won't. Even when they say they want to, uh, we give support and they feel offended. Yeah, eights are very action oriented. They are in the gut triad. So questions that they immediately um ask when something has to be done is, okay, what does your gut say? What action are we going to do? They are reacting very much from their gut instincts. So other people who might not react uh, from their gut, uh, people who might react through mental analysis or through emotional feelings, um, th that can be a bit of a disconnect. Gio asks, any advice for how type fives can work on finding a better balance between withdrawing and connecting to others in the world? Uh, that's a wonderful question. I, I think uh, first and foremost, looking into how you can develop into your growth path, right? You want to be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to be able to move your body, um, become social. Let me just, I actually have a slide that I can pull up on the screen here about fives and their growth paths. Let me just slip through here real quick. Um, oh, that's four. Hang on. Let me go to fives. Here we go. Okay, so um, 
in growth, fives move to the healthy side of an Enneagram type eight. So what that could look like is getting outside, moving your body. You're more physically active. Not only are you exercising your brain, but you're exercising um, your, your physicality. You're getting outside. I find that fives who are in a stress path, they uh, retreat, they withdraw, they become very introverted and not that introversion is a bad thing, but um, they kind of say to themselves, like, if I have any needs, I'm going to be a burden to other people. So I'm just not going to have any needs and I'm not going to put myself out there. Um, if you are in your growth path, fives, they, they choose to participate in activities and social events. You're, you're going to feel more self-confident and capable. And you'll know that you're in a stress path if you're moving to the average to unhealthy traits of an Enneagram type seven. So what that looks like is your mind is on overdrive, right? And you find it hard to focus. You start making impulsive decisions and your usual cynicism is like turned up to 11, right? So your plate is overloaded. You take on a lot of new projects and tasks, but there's not a lot of substance underneath that. So um, it, it's a lot of busy work and overloading your plate, but you're not necessarily refueling yourself or feeling good. So I think if you can find ways to move to your um, into your growth path, that would be really helpful for type fives. Avi says, is it possible to mistype due to external forces? I'm a two wing three, but my family responsibilities bring out my type one wing. Initially thought I was a one. Avi, like Abby. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Avi. I will I will say your name correctly from now on because you're on all of the lives. I should know you should know how to pronounce your name. Oh, there is a bird behind me. The spring birds are out, out to play. Um. Yes. So there's actually, so I just showed the growth paths and stress paths of an Enneagram type five. There's actually a thing called a blind spot path, which is where you go in stress when you're around, pe when you're around people that you trust, when you're around pe like family members or people that you're really close to, people who aren't going to abandon you the second you uh, do something that is not appropriate. Um, so when you you know, when you are under stress around your family, you can look like a different type because you're acting more along the lines of what your blind spot path is. Adriana says, not all eights are prone to anger. That's true. Um, a lot of people have learned how to um, healthily balance their emotions and where they're coming from. And so oftentimes in the Enneagram, we're talking about things that are when we're at our unhealthiest state. So um, when I teach workshops and stuff, I find that the older and wiser people are like, yeah, I used to be like that when I was in my 20s, my 30s, but I've really learned how to navigate that through X, Y, and Z. So uh, that's my hope for my own journey of like self-growth is that I will I will get better and better at um, taking care of myself and knowing like what, what the best reactions are for me to do. Brightest Crayon asks, how old were you when you started being interested in the Enneagram? What made you get into it? How old was I? I'm not good at like quick math, but it was 2018 and I'm 32 now. So someone who's good at math, help me. Um, my One of my roommates was really into the Enneagram and she had like initially typed me as an eight. This was prior to me being any interested in it at all. She had like a huge book on the Enneagram and I was like, that is way too much of a hurdle for me to get into some new um, personality hobby. I was really into Myers-Briggs. I was really into StrengthsFinder. And I was like, I don't need another one. Um, and then I, I won an Instagram giveaway from, I think, Ivy Press. And they sent me a book about the Enneagram. And I got so into it because I read the Enneagram 3 chapter. And I was like, this is me. I started crying. I was like, this explains so much. And uh, it, it kind of gave me this aha moment um, of why I, I do the things I do and, and, a, and a, 
reason for me to feel like I'm, I'm not alone. Like there are other people who feel this way and it was really beautiful and really helpful. And I was like, I need to learn as much as I possibly can about this typing system. Cause it, it, it seems like a really helpful framework and tool for me to grow as a person. So that's how I got into the Enneagram. Um, Someone said 27. Thank you. I was 27 when I learned about the Enneagram. I, if you, I'm very bad at quick math and, and numbers. Um, I actually have an, uh, I forget what it's called, but my mom and I have it where you, when you see numbers, you see letters and like, it's, it's like dyslexia, but for math. Um, so like, it's very confusing and it's funny because like my job is working with like numbers and, um, doing all this stuff. Actually, let me just check something really fast. Um, settings, audio. There we go. Um, how can you hear me better now? I just plugged in the mic. This is a follow-up to Abby. She asked if um, Enneagram sixes are um, can be really perfectionistic, and she says she is. Per she's a six, and she um, wants to do her job well and succeed. I don't want to look like I don't know what I'm doing. Like I, I, I want to be less credible. So you want to have, you want to feel like you are um, competent and capable. To me, that sounds like. Um, motivations of an Enneagram type five. Um, but again, like perfectionism, that behavior of like trying to make sure everything is correct is a behavior. And the Enneagram is very much internally based, motivation based. So you want to look at um, why are you doing the things that you're doing instead of what are the things that I'm doing in order to type yourself. Sierra says, hey, Abby. Hello, Sierra. I've identified as a two wing three for several years, but I recently moved away from my family from grad school and I'm starting to feel more like a three wing two. Can Enneagram types change? What am I? <laughs> so I believe that Enneagram types do not change. Most Enneagram teachers will tell you that you are one main type. What does happen is you move, uh, you have different circumstances in life and you grow and change and learn more about yourself. So um, you can definitely like operate, like if you're in a really stressful time, you can be off operating on survival mode. You'll be in like a prolonged stress path. And so you won't be exhibiting signs of your main type. Um, so Enneagram types cannot change, but your understanding of yourself can. Samantha says, I feel frustrated trying to find my Enneagram number. How could I be finding and how can finding my Enneagram be a less stressful process? That makes me so sad. Um, finding your Enneagram number should be a fun journey. And I, I know that shoulds and woulds like are all like words you're not supposed to use, right? Because when you're shooting yourself, <laughs> you are, you are t like setting yourself up for disappointment, right? So um, let me just say that it, this is this is not um, a race to the finish line, right? The process of finding your Enneagram type, the process of learning about yourself is the work. That is the reason that we're, that we're even interested in the Enneagram, right? We want to learn more about ourselves. So think of it more like a road trip instead of you're, you know, going to a destination to run an errand, right? On the road trip, you're seeing the sights, you're enjoying, you're getting out of the car to see elephant seals, um, next to the beach. I don't know if you guys have ever seen elephant seals. They're crazy. Um, yeah, so just think of it more like a journey, but I am really sorry that it's been stressful. I do have a um, live training that I did last week for finding your type that hopefully will make it easier for people. That will be up for sale next week on my website. I'm still editing it because I want it to look to be perfect for those who um, purchase it, but that will be up and ready to go soon. Luna says, do you have a hard time recording the bad sides of being a three on your videos? As a three, I'd feel that. Yeah, I, ha I have a hard time just talking about threes, to be honest, because I, FYI, I am a three. Um, because I feel like 
it's just cringy. Like, and I, it's so true. And like, I feel like I'm putting myself on blast, which I very much am. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't like the, the stuff that I do that is, um, negative and I have to expl exploit it <laughs> for the, for the internet. Um, no, it's not necessarily exploiting. Um, it helps me present threes and, and I think a really, um, authentic way because, um, there aren't many other like creators that are making like videos and stuff that are threes. So I, I think it's, it's helpful for, for fellow threes to put myself out there, but yes, I do have a hard time with that. Feisty pancakes. <laughs> I love that name. Feisty pancakes. I used Abby's videos about what not to say to each type. And I had someone read negative statements to me with conviction. And I only felt an emotional response to type five problem solved. So that is how Feisty Pancakes decided they were a type five. Um, yes, everyone, this is Lemon. He is very concerned that I'm talking to no one. So he has to sit on my lap or he will be barking. Um, and that is my little bub. He is my little best friend. Um, someone on Instagram asks, major differences between a two and a nine. Um, twos and nines can look really similar. They have uh, they have a tendency to look at the world through positivity. Something bad happens, they try to spin it. Um, they focus a lot on other people and trying to meet other people's needs and make people happy and make make um, the space uh, everything feel copacetic. However, um, the way that they differ is in their core motivations, right? So Enneagram twos they they want to be loved and they want to be appreciated and the strategies that they use to get there is they help people um they put their own desires to the side they um struggle with pride and and they fear being rejected so they'll do in their unhealthy state they'll do pretty much anything not to be rejected um and then type nines they're all about inner and outer peace they want everything to be um golden. So it's not necessarily that they need to be appreciated, but they want everything to feel calm and feel good. I mean, obviously everyone likes to be appreciated, but they're very different um, internal motivations. Uh, Rex says, Enneagram types don't change, but what about wings? Yeah, wings wings are flexible. That That can change every other day. Some people lean more on one type than the other uh, more often, but you want to think of them like salt and pepper. They're flavorings to your main type, and you can lean on one or the other depending on what kind of strategies you're using to employ to get through the day. Oh, don't fall. You want to get down? Let's see if he wants to get down. I don't know. Okay, can you sit? Okay, we'll see if, this, if he starts barking. I'm sorry. Sweet so asks, can a type five be an ambivert? I personally love spending time with people that I like and don't have to put tons of effort into carrying conversation, but everything else is like a five. Okay. Any Enneagram type can be, okay, hang on. Never mind, he has to be held at all times. Any Enneagram type can be um, introverted or extroverted. So unlike MBTI, that cognitive function isn't um, specific to Enneagram types. Uh, there are, yes, you can be introverted, you can be an ambivert, you can be uh, extroverted. Some types tend to lean more towards introversion than um, extroversion, but, I, but it is not a hard and fast rule. So um, again, that is a behavior and not necessarily a core motivation. Oh, okay. Alice. I'm sorry about that. Not sweet. Alice says that. <laughs> Rue says, uh, I relate to both seven and four, but they seem so different. Are they connected in any way? Um, yes. Let me pull up my seven and four slide. Hang on one second. Okay, 
turns out, I do not think I have a slide about that. So I'm sorry. Um, but essentially, they they both come uh, look at problems through a really creative lens. They are incredibly, um, they're incredibly out of the box thinkers. They don't really love to go by like procedures and structure 24 seven, like they want to mix things up. So I, I can see how they would be connected in that way. They both enjoy the, the world and exploring the world and feeling the beauty in the world. Obviously the way that they differ is in the way that they process um, difficult emotions. They um, like sevens are going to want to reframe, look at the positives, have fun, experience the next stimulation and move on. Whereas fours are not, uh, they're not uh, afraid of deeper emotions and melancholy and diving into this, you know, wide range of emotions that they have. Bertha says <laughs> that she, she shares my passion for triads. I freaking love triads. I just put out a video on YouTube about the centers of intelligence triad, which I'm just like, I'm obsessed with. I think if you're having trouble finding your type, look at the triads. It's a fantastic like hack or cheat code for finding what your Enneagram type is because it can help you narrow down from nine types to three types. And there's so many different triads and ways that we categorize all of the types um, by ways they react and behave similarly. So I think that can be really helpful. Avi says, still waiting on your collab with Hillary. Me too. I, I would love to collab with Hillary. She lives in Arizona and I'm here in LA, but um, next time she's around or if I'm ever in Arizona, I would 100%. Um, what a freaking awesome woman. I think she's so cool and very open to doing a collab with her. I wish we lived closer. Yeah, David said. David says especially the self preservation for um, that. A self preservation for can appear way less melancholy. They can look more out, outwardly happy, and therefore sometimes be my, mistyped as seven. So that is a way that fours and sevens can look similar. Um, and also, sorry, you're welcome. Serious abitude. <laughs> um, yeah. Triads are such a wonderful way of finding your main type. Can eights be similar to type twos in the sense that they might neglect their own needs, vulnerabilities? Yes. Let me pull up type eight. Okay. Um, so in stress, uh, Eights go to the unhealthy traits of a type of five. So that looks like you withdrawing, detaching from the world. And that looks like um, not asking for help. You know, uh, that's neglecting their own needs, distrusting other people, kind of uh, overextending their capabilities, getting burnt out. Um and in growth, they move to the healthy side of a type two, which looks like standing up for others. You know, you allow yourself to open up and be vulnerable, even if that means sharing more uncomfortable feelings with people. So, um, so really it, it looks when uh, type eights are stressed out, they, they feel like they're a burden and they are not going to reach out to other people and try to get help. Are all people the stereotype of their Enneagram? Like a three always a workaholic or one being annoying perfection on a daily basis? Yeah, so I am, I have, I have some, uh, I'm part of this problem in, in that uh, funny memes and videos about the Enneagram rely on stereotypes and, and exaggerating um, more unhealthy characteristics in order to show the differences between each type. I find that to be fun and like a, a funny way to go through the Enneagram, but I do not recommend defining your type based off of those like 
based off of memes or 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 those kind of quick tidbits of like entertainment uh, focused on the Enneagram. We are not all the stereotypes of our Enneagram. Like um, threes can be workaholics, so can sevens, so can twos. Ones um, can struggle with perfectionists, as we've seen in this chat, so can sixes, um, so can fives. That Those are all um, behaviors, and I would recommend typing yourself based off the core motivations. That's the core four. In fact, let me let me just go through that really fast because I, I find it to be super helpful. If you're not familiar with the core four of the Enneagram, it's the most important part of the Enneagram. Um, it's, it's what sets the Enneagram apart from other personality typing systems like DISC or MBTI or StrengthsFinders. It's asking why do we do the things that we do, right? Um, so the, uh, the co your core fear is your first core motivation. That's basically what you're running away from. Um, your core desire is what you're running towards. Like if I get this thing, I will be fulfilled. Your core weakness is that main thing that you're wrestling with. Um, and that's also something that sets the Enneagram apart from other typing systems is the Enneagram looks at your weakness and says, okay, how can we manage this weakness instead of letting it manage us? And then your core longing, which is that message your heart needs to hear, like Enneagram fives, their core longing is to know that they are not a burden, but their core desire is to be competent in any and all situations. So th those are two very different things. Megan says, I'm a one and my house never looks perfectly clean. Yes. Uh, again, like those are stereotypes of each number, but that doesn't mean that if you are not constantly cleaning and fluffing your pillows that you're not an Enneagram one. Um, Enneagram ones want to be good. They want to, uh, they want to behave ethically and morally according to their own internal standards. And that has nothing to do with keeping your house clean. Rue asks, um, any resources for, resources for more information on the subtypes? Um, I freaking love subtypes. There's a book by, I think, Beatrice Chestnut um, where she, she goes deep into uh, subtypes that I recommend. I, I can put it in the description once I post this video. I'm also planning on doing a training later in the year and a very long video about subtypes um, that is happening this year, but I can't, I do not have an exact date for you. Subtypes are a fantastic way of looking into what your, um, what kind of Enneagram type you are, because there's 26 different subtypes. So every Enneagram type has three subtypes that they could be. Paul says, during quarantine, while working from home, my three wife actually said to me, I had no idea how hard you work. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think that threes oftentimes like go above and beyond what most people feel like is a, is a normal work schedule. But again, that's not a hard and fast rule. But I, I do find that threes push themselves pretty hard to work as hard as possible to get as much as done, done as humanly possible. It's exhausting. I had some questions on Instagram I'm going to address. Andy asks, what's the difference between a three and an eight? Um, threes and eights do look similar. They are both hardworking. They're both assertive. Um, the, the main difference is what do they, what are they mo mostly running towards? What is their core desire, right? Threes want to appear successful. They want to do, they feel like they need to do things in order to be worthy of love. They need to accomplish things in order accomplish things in order to be worthy of love. Whereas eights, um, they don't feel like they need to accomplish things in order to be worthy of love. They accomplish things so that they can gain power and, um, and never be harmed or betrayed. They want to protect themselves and the people they love above all else. So if you're ever confused about the difference between types, um, oh, hang on. Sorry. Someone called me and it went 
to my computer and my phone. Hang on one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, Paul says Beatrice Chestnut stuff is awesome. Yeah. I, I have her book somewhere in there on subtypes and it's fantastic. Are all type four people dreamy and feeling and feeling types and no one is logical. I'm a type four wing five and more logical. Again, the, the dreamy like feeling thing, those are behaviors, not um, necessary, not motivation. So type fours, they long to have significance. They want um, their existence on this planet to mean something, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all daydreamers. My husband is a four wing five and he's very logical. He really loves statistics. He often thinks uh, about things through mental analysis, but as a four, he has a deep connection with his own feelings, very emotionally intelligent. So, um, so I just highly recommend looking at the core motivations of each type. Avi says, I think that's why I struggled to find my type. I could be any of the types, but the core four was the key. Ranking the core motivation helps. Yes. I think I'd rather be liked than be good or be happy. Um, I often, I, I often, tell people like, if you're struggling, like, and you've never read a book about the Enneagram, please read a book about the Enneagram or listen to an audiobook if you're not much of a reader, because diving into um, all the nine types, really reading about them, that can be so incredibly helpful for, for understanding what the core motivations are for all nine types. And, and that really is where um, the self-understanding can like come to life. Uh, Rue says, can't wait for your subtype video. Yeah, I'm like kind of dreading editing it, um, to be honest, which is why it's probably it hasn't been made because like 26 subtypes talking about 26 subtypes. It's gonna be like an hour long video. So like, how do I do this in a way that is, uh, I don't know. Oh my goodness. Is someone named baby names with Becky? Baby names with Becky. Tell us some, some, tell us some amazing baby names. I want to know. Amazing. If you're just joining on Instagram, hello, I'm doing a YouTube live. So if you want your questions answered, answered, you can hop on to YouTube. Rex online says four wing fives and five wing fours are both very balanced types. Both can be equally logical and in touch with their emotions. Exactly. So uh, it, it, it all kind of depends on where your health is as your Enneagram type. Can't hear you. Amazing. We can't hear you. Um, yes. Alice says, is it possible to have balanced wings? I feel like I use both four and six a lot and pretty much equally. Yes, it's 100%. It's 100% uh, possible to have balanced wings. So if you're a five and you, you know, lean on your four and lean on your six, really it's, it's, it's you lean on your wings in order to help you do things. So it, it, it can change day to day. They can be complementary. They can be contradictory to your main type, and they can definitely be balanced. Avi says, do the one hour long video for Patreon and release the edited version later on your channel. It's a good idea. I actually have stopped my Patreon because I it was too much for me to manage. I wasn't doing it well. So I was like, if I'm not going to do it well, I'm not going to do it at all. So um, so I took it off. So maybe, maybe someday in the future when I feel like I have, um, more help, or maybe if I can bring someone onto my team, I could do Patreon in a, in a good way, in a way that like would make me happy. But for now, oh shoot, uh, sound is not working on Instagram. Let me try taking out the mic. Okay. Can you hear me now on Instagram? Let me know if you can hear me. Woohoo. Awesome. So Rusty, Rusty Helm. Helm's deep. I don't know. Lord of the Rings on the brain. I think I did the math on any of your wings and subtypes. There are 100, 190 combinations. Yeah, there's a lot of combos going on. 
Um, if you're on Instagram, let me know if you can hear me. I just, I had a mic in, hopefully I was hoping it would help you hear me, but, um, I, I think it was actually messing up the sound. Okay. Karen asks, twos don't want to be needy and eights are the same, right? By denying weakness. Um, yeah, I, I think that there there are definitely similarities between twos and eights not wanting – like eights will not want to lean on other people because they don't want to put power in other people's hands. Or they don't want to um, be vulnerable by leaning on someone for something else, whereas twos don't want to appear as needy because they are afraid that people will reject them if they have needs. Instead, they're going to try to um, take over – uh, other people's needs preemptively, uh, think of other people's needs so that th they will always be needed so that people feel like they're indispensable and valuable to other people. Shoot. Yeah, I guess I'm muted on Instagram. I'm going to quote, I'm going to close the Instagram live because I, I don't, I think it's not working. So my bad. Sorry. And this card, yeah. Oops. Yeah, my um, my phone's not working for some reason. Like my phone audio is not working. I really need to get a new phone, but I do not want to spend the money. So for now, we will just keep on trucking. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you're on the YouTube live stream, hello, welcome. Thank you for being here. Let me know where you're where you're uh, zooming in from, or where where are you located. Avi asks, I know you do Enneagram workshops for businesses. Would you ever consider doing it for other organizations like writer retreats? Yeah, 100%. Are you kidding? I'm doing a, a workshop for a group of photographers in October. They're all pet photographers and they're in Iceland. So I'm gonna, it's going to be like virtual, but I'm really excited. But um, we're, we're talking about how to use knowledge of the Enneagram to better serve your photography clients, your pet photography clients. So yeah, I'm I'm really I'm I'm honestly open to doing workshops for anyone. It's my absolute favorite activity. Ooh, Costa Rica. We've got Louisiana, Croatia, awesome Adriana, Sweden. So cool. Um you have any Enneagram questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. You're burning Enneagram questions. Anything you guys would want to see on the channel? Um, really struggling with oh, wait a minute, it's okay. Really struggling with content and like trying to figure out what. I'm just I I I, I wrote I said online like I'm feeling kind of burnt out on content and um, lately I've been feeling really a lot more inspired because I took a break. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you want to see on the channel, uh, we talked about the subtypes video that would be helpful for you guys. David says, uh, as an eight, I feel like I push through my own needs with just sheer willpower to not burden my dear ones. Yeah, a way of protecting other people. Um, you you feel like you don't want to be a burden to other people. So you, you know, you try to do everything yourself and not lean on other people. That's another strategy that you use to protect other people. That's a um that's a great insight. Thank you for sharing that, David. Megan, that's awesome. I'm so glad. We love nines. Big fan of nines. Obvious from Trinidad and T Tobago, sending sun from the Caribbean. Oh, that's amazing. Megan says he thought being a peacekeeper was a weakness. And um, pretty much anyone, <laughs> when you find your type, you usually think it's the worst type because you cringe the most, you can see the most truth in it, and that can be really difficult. Um, so, you know, I... Uh, you know, I'm sorry that he felt that way, but it definitely is not. There are strengths and weaknesses to all the nine types. David says, I would like seeing the types as artists. That's a good idea. Like as a video, like Enneagram types as artists. Let me write that in my ideas. 
Enneagram types as artists. I actually really like that. I think that'd be fun. Jen asks, are certain Enneagram types more susceptible to particular mental, mental health issues? Um, that I am not qualified to answer. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not know. I, there has not been any research that I've seen about that. So I don't want to put two cents into something I'm not qualified to talk about. Um, Lord of the Rings Enneagram, please. Yes. Actually, um, the You've Got a Type uh, you've got a type YouTube channel, um, just did this. So I, so you can go onto his channel and I think he did a whole, um, deep dive into Lord of the Rings and the Enneagram types videos, like what you talked about today, comparing what is similar and different between the types that would be interesting. I think I should start making those. So like comparing the similarities and differences between types. Good idea, Luna. Ooh, living on the outskirts of Baton Rouge. Rex also felt the same. She didn't want to be a nine. I didn't want to be a three when I first saw it, but it made a lot of sense. Um, I think eights generally love when they discover your type. That is one thing I have found. Most types are like, oh, man, I was really hoping I wouldn't be that type. And a lot of eights are like, yeah, that definitely sounds like me, <laughs> which kind of speaks to their personality. Um, Adriana is an artist, a photographer, so she'd like to see how I do Enneagram types as artists, Enneagram types shopping or watching movies. That's a good idea. Types as teachers or students. That's a good idea, too. I'm a type one and I have OCD, et cetera. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I mean, I don't feel like I'm not qualified to talk about mental health um, diagnoses or anything. Like I would definitely look to a mental health professional and not me. I know about the Enneagram. I can't tell you about uh, OCD. Not qualified. Yes. <laughs> they, Mon Montserrat Esquival thought um, it was really cool being an eight. I, that's, it's the typical reaction that I, that I find when eights discover that they are eights. And I don't know, I don't really know why, but I think it's really funny. What's bringing you joy and peace lately? That's a good question. What's bringing me joy and peace? Hiking. Um, I just hiked Mount Wilson with my dad. It was really beautiful. Um, going on a hike on Friday. I just, it, it's been like a huge joy. There's nothing like your, your, when your brain, when you're on a hike is so nice. Cause I feel like my brain's on overdrive all the time. So yeah, hiking has been a joy. I've been reading like fantasy romance novels. <laughs> I don't know how I would turn that into an Enneagram video. <laughs> Something that helped me understanding Enneagram types is personality database. It's not 100%. But it's fun seeing what people think Enneagram type characters are. Yeah. If it helps you, do it. Karen says, I'm a counter type six and relate a lot to eights. Eights and counterphobic sixes oftentimes uh, mistype because counterphobic sixes, instead of running away from fear or trying to um, prevent it at all costs, type sixes that are counterphobic, they will face their fear head on. So they look a lot like eights and that they are aggressive towards their fear. But the reasons they are doing that is going to be, excuse me, going to be very different. David had a different experience finding out he's an eight. He cried. Um, to me, it was learning. I had to reconnect with my innocence, having to grow fast. Oh, that's really um, sweet that that's, that's a sad and sweet thing um, because, yes, I often find that eights, eights learned pretty early on how much it hurt them to feel uh, powerless or to be harmed or betrayed. So they spend the rest of their lives trying not to feel that way. Enneagram types as Enneagram coaches. That's such a niche video. <laughs> Just Enneagram coaches would watch it. Best dog breeds for each type. Corgis for threes. Where's my corgi? He's underneath the table. Um, there it is. Inner dialogue on a hike. 
<laughs> Love it. Catherine says, I fiercely protect my people. I have to be mindful to not crush them with my protection and love. I am an eight and I'll fight you on it. I love that. Yeah, that's a really good uh, description of how much eights protect their people and their family and what a big heart that they are, that they have. Hidden in Plain Sight says, how do you know for sure if you're a five or a four? In your opinion, I've discovered an Enneagram. I discovered Enneagram five plus years ago and still to this day I've yet to come up with a definitive conclusion. Um, for this, I would take out the wings because wings are helpful flavorings like salt and pepper to your main type. But uh, before you look at wings, I recommend you look at the main type. So just look at the core motivations of the type five and core motivations of the type four and ask yourself which ones, um, which ones do I, which of these do I make decisions from? Like, am I making decisions trying to run towards having a significant identity in life and, and having purpose? Or am I making decisions in life because I want to be as knowledgeable and as competent um, as possible and know everything I can about the world around me. So those are two diff very different motivations for life. Um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Alice is a, a Enneagram types as couples video, like an example one, five, six, nine, etc. That would be funny. Um, yeah, I think that would be a really good idea. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> Rusty says cats are type fives. Agree. Um, let me know what, what types of, uh, dog breeds you think each Enneagram type is. Obviously this is not based in any, anything but fun. Oh, Fatima's asking how a type three would appear in growth and stress. Great question. I've got a slide. Let's pull it up. Talk about it. Awesome. All right, so threes in growth, they go to the healthy side of an Enneagram type six. So what that looks like is you open up about your challenges. Um, oftentimes uh, threes, when they're struggling, they disappear into their um, problems and they don't want to share it with anyone because then they might look unsuccessful. So um, when you open up to your community, like, hey, I, I'm really struggling with this, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling, you know, hopeless, whatever it may be, um, that is a sign of growth and um, and a willingness to change. And yeah, just letting yourself be vulnerable, focusing outward instead of inward. So like volunteering or helping other people or doing something that's not based on your own success and goals. In stress, type threes go to the unhealthy, average to unhealthy traits of a type nine. So that looks like shutting down, numbing out, um, still keeping busy, but not really doing anything and just losing interest in things that bring you joy. Sydney asks, uh, how do you differentiate between a seven and a two, especially as a woman? Um, again, seven and twos can look similar in their approach to positivity, um, but but really the difference lies in why are you doing the things that you do? So what are your core motivations? Is it to um, be happy and content and get as much as you can from your life? Or is it to be loved and appreciated and to feel like everybody in your life like needs you? Um, those are two very different things. So I would I would really examine the core motivations of a two and a seven. Uh, yes, two and a seven. I'm also thinking like from these questions, I'm realizing that it would be really helpful to have videos about each of the types and why each type, like how each type relates to each type. That is not, yes, that is not cohesive sentence, but basically like a video about twos and how they might look like all the other um, eight numbers, right? I think that might be really helpful. <laughs> I 
I don't have a dog, but I like chihuahuas and I'm a type one. <laughs> just everyone's answer is just like the dog that they have, which is what my answer was. Threes are corgis because I have a corgi. Catherine says, my dream job is a gym teacher. Awesome. <laughs> chihuahuas are counterphobic sixes. All that bravado is pace from fear. <laughs> I don't know chihuahuas that well. Um, so you guys must um, know more about them than I do. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Avi. That's really sweet. Book genres by Enneagram. All I read is YA and romance. So I would not be very good at <laughs> I would, They would all be like YA and, and romance genres. Oh, Pitbull for eight. I could see that. I freaking love Pitbulls. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> romantic fantasies each type has not appropriate for youtube couldn't couldn't go there um but yeah i, I do link all of my current reads on my goodreads i'm i actually just picked up my first octavia butler books parables of the sower so i'm just starting to read that and that's been really awesome a guitar and eogram video this is the best idea anyone has ever given me. Why have I not? Are you kidding me? Why have I not even thought about it? I am a Sarah J. Moss diehard, okay? I read Throne of Glass series like way before TikTok in, in, it was invented, okay? I'm doing that as soon as possible. Akatar. If, if you, anyone is unfamiliar, Akatar is a court of Throne of Moses by Sarah J. Moss, and she writes amazing uh, fairy <laughs> novels, and I'm definitely doing that. Thank you so much for that. That's amazing. Oh, man. <laughs> Adriana, who's an eight, says, I like pities, but I'm more of a Great Dane gal. I love Great Danes. Yeah, feisty pancakes. And the sisters alone are perfect for the video, let alone Tamlin, Reese, and Cassius. Oh my gosh. I wonder what. Well, Nesta is an eight, a hundred percent. Um, Elaine, probably a nine. I'm just off the top of my head. Feyre, I don't know. What do you think Feyre is? If you don't know what Akatar is and you want a fun read, a court of thorns and roses. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's such a great idea. All right. I've, I've run out of, of live stream steam. That is a word. Um, so thank you for being here. I'm going to head out. I appreciate everyone showing up, asking questions, theorizing animals and dog types of all anagram types. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. I hope everyone has a really lovely day. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you, Feisty Pancakes. I, I will always be indebted to you for the ACOTAR. Um, <laughs> bye, guys. Thank you.